It is 747. Time now for our three times a weekly, what they try weekly, I guess, visit with Dr. K, Dr. Kevin Cavanaugh. Good morning. Uh, good morning, sir. How was your weekend? Oh, it was very good. Very good. I just got a notice on my phone that Pfizer has come out with uh, some information regarding uh, the effectiveness of something that they're that they're involved with. I don't know. Do you know anything about it? Well, it's their vaccine. They stated right. initially 90% effective. Now, this is preventing COVID-19. They didn't look at preventing deaths, and they should have 50 million doses out, which means 25 million people can be vaccinated by the end of the year. So this is very, very good news. This is much more effective than what I was hoping for. I mean, I mean, I thought if it was 70% effective, it would be great. We'd probably get something that's 50, 60% effective. 90% effective is extremely good news. And so that is kind of a light at the tunnel. And I think that also brings us into the word of caution that we don't want people bricking up the tunnel by spreading around this virus and having it mutate. Jack, you know I've sent you before multiple emails with the little article out of China that says they've made 106 viruses and 10 of them are resistant to monoclonal antibodies. And that's kind of a depressing article. But we've now, and this is all over the news, so I'm going to talk about it. But in Denmark, the virus jumped from a person to minks, you know, the animal minks that you make mink coats out of spread within the mink population, mutated to a version that they think was resistant to the vaccine, and it spread back to a few humans, according to CNN. Now, they've, wow. they've, they've got the outbreak taken under control. Denmark killed 17 million minks to control this thing. So that should tell you two things. One, this virus is very infectious, and very dangerous, or they wouldn't uh, kill off the minks. And two, the concern about mutations is really real. And that happens when people are out there going crazy and spreading this virus around. It will jump to animals, jump back to people, and you can avoid all of this by masks and social distancing. And what we don't want to have happen is have a cure come out, and because people are acting crazy, not wearing masks, not social distancing, not participating with contact tracing, that we have this virus mutate to a version where that vaccine doesn't work. The other thing that's concerning to me is the fact that they know what the genetic sequence is and can vary just one amino acid. They know what those amino acids are and come up with a virus that's resistant to the antibodies. And so for the conspiracy theorists, if you think this is made in the lab, you've, you've got some more ammunition there. It's not that, oh, gee, the virus is 99.9% .9 similar to animal viruses. Well, no, just one variation of one amino acid, they know what it is, they know how to make it, can make a new virus. So again, we really do need to wear a mask, socially distance, and make sure this thing doesn't rapidly spread because we know how to make vaccines now. They can rapidly make them and get them out, but it behooves us not to form a anti-vaccine environment in the United States by spreading around these viruses. So let's follow public health advice. So good news, but with a word of caution. All right, at least five people in Trump's orbit uh, have now tested positive, right? That's correct, and that includes Mark Meadows, his chief of staff, we're not hearing much word about these individuals. However, luckily, they'll have, they'll have access to the monoclonal antibodies, the stuff that really works. And so I would suspect they will recover. And I, and I certainly hope that they do. I mean, we need to get people not dying of this disease. And in Kentucky, we're almost up to 1,600 deaths. I think last count was 1,565. This is still increasing. Now, that's 10 times more than a normal flu epidemic right now. And so this is 10 times more fatal than the flu. It's much more infectious than the flu, which is why you need to wear a mask and socially distance. And that is crucial in Kentucky 
with their skyrocketing cases. Now let's go back to this Pfizer success that you talked about first with their vaccine. Does that mean we are a step closer to having that vaccine for, for people, for human consumption? Well, yes. If it is safe, I think that we will have at least 25 million people vaccinated by the end of the year. Remember, this vaccine requires two doses. It's the one that has to be shipped on dry ice, minus 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So you're not going to be able to have it uh, available to everybody's doctor. It will be probably to a central location. From what I understand, when they break open the packet, they have about six hours to give out 100 doses of the vaccine. So I imagine it will be an appointment for the vaccine. People line up and they would then get it. Unfortunately, from what I can tell myself, even though I'm over 65 and high risk, we're way down on the totem pole as far as being in line to get the vaccine. The healthcare workers will be first. Uh, you have other high-risk frontline workers. You have people in nursing homes. You have children, etc. So there will be ethics committees to decide who is going to get the vaccine first. But this one looks very, very promising. Dr. Kevin Cavanaugh, thank you so much. Thank you, sir.